Hi everyone, my name is Olivia Terranova. I'm the Prevention Coordinator at the WCA, and today we will be going through our Break the Cycle presentation. I'll be doing this presentation with Tracy Darling DeMarcus, who you'll hear on the next slide. Hi everyone, my name is Tracy Darling DeMarcus, and I am the Prevention Program Manager for the Women's and Children's Alliance, or the WCA. At the WCA, our mission is to provide safety, healing, and freedom from domestic abuse and sexual assault. We do this in a lot of different ways by providing necessary services like hotlines, a safe and secure shelter, counseling, case management um, to people in the community who have experienced abuse or assault and need help in some way, shape, or form. Um, so if the mission is what we do, our vision is why we do it. Our vision as an organization is to foster a community where individuals thrive in safe and healthy relationships. That's why it's really important to us that we're out in the community talking to people about this stuff um, and why we're really grateful that you have joined us here today. Now let's talk about relationships. I bet when, you, when I first say relationships, the first thing to pop into your mind is with a dating or romantic partner, but there are actually a lot more relationships that we have in our lives. We have relationships with our parents, with our guardians, we have relationships with our friends and with our peers at school, maybe with our teammates or our coaches, even with our teachers. People that we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis are all people that we form relationships with. They're all just different types of relationships. What makes a relationship healthy? So before you move on to the next slide, I encourage you to take a moment, whether you're alone or with a group of people, to think or talk about what you think constitutes a healthy relationship or what adds up to a healthy relationship. There are no wrong answers. Just have that open conversation and see what you come up with. So what makes a relationship healthy? Here are 10 components of a healthy relationship. There are lots of other things that can be important to keeping a relationship healthy, but generally speaking, if these 10 things are present and working together, we can assume that that relationship is most likely healthy. First, we have safety, and we're talking about two types of safety, both emotional or mental safety, that is being able to share your thoughts, feelings, and opinions, and physical safety. Acceptance means allowing a person to be their true and authentic self not feeling like they have to act or dress a certain way or pretend to like things they don't like just to be in a relationship with that person. Support is being there for someone when things get difficult or when they are making decisions that you wouldn't necessarily make for yourself. Even though you might disagree, those are still their decisions to make and you should support them. Equality. The definition of an abusive relationship is when one person has more power and control than the other. So if you are practicing equality in your relationship, both people have an equal say in making decisions and an equal amount of power. Fairness. This also ties to equality. In any type of relationship, it should feel like everyone is treated fairly and putting in an effort to make the relationship healthy. Communication. Communication is key, particularly positive communication. So being able to talk openly and honestly without fear or judgment listening and also knowing that you're being heard. We know that fights are going to happen and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's how the fights are handled that really determines if the communication is healthy or not. Individuality. We all have different and unique qualities about ourselves and that's a beautiful thing. You should be able to maintain the things that make you you in a relationship and those things should not just be tolerated but celebrated because our uniqueness and individuality can be one of the most fun things about our relationships. Mutual space. It can be really fun and exciting, especially at the beginning of a relationship or a new friendship, to want to spend all of your time with that person. And that's okay, but it's important to maintain your other friendships and relationships outside of that one person, and they should be encouraging you to do those things. Trust. Trust is built over time and goes hand in hand with honesty. The more you are honest with someone, the more trust you build. And when you have trust, you feel more confident and safe being honest with someone, especially about things that might be difficult to talk about. Trust and honesty build on one another, and you can't really have one without the other in a healthy relationship. Finally, respect. We like to say that if you're doing all these other things, you are probably showing respect in your relationship. 
Respect has to go both ways. Both people should be putting in an equal amount of effort and showing respect on both sides. So when you're thinking about your relationships, you can reflect on which of these components are present. Which are you doing really well? Which could you maybe work on to better or strengthen your relationship to be as healthy as it can be? Similar to when I asked you what makes a relationship healthy, I'm going to ask you what makes a relationship unhealthy slash abusive. So before you move on to that next slide, whether you're alone or you are with a group of people, I encourage you to either think or have a conversation about what would constitute an unhealthy or abusive relationship. What makes a relationship unhealthy or abusive? So the definition of a abusive relationship is a pattern of actions used to gain and maintain power and control over another person. I know that's a lot of words, so what I'm going to encourage you to really remember or focus on is a pattern of actions and power and control. So a pattern of actions used to gain power and control over another person. So something that's happening continuously and are those actions being used as a way to have more power or control over that other individual. Another important thing to acknowledge is that abuse can happen between any two people regardless of their age, their race, their sexual orientation, or religion, education level, income level, or gender. I think a lot of times we have this vision of who can be abused in a relationship, and typically it's a woman um, from a low lower income and a certain socioeconomic standing, and that just simply isn't true. Anyone can experience domestic abuse. And also, this isn't just something that affects people who are married and in a male and female relationship. This can happen in all types of intimate partner relationships, whether that's with romantic partners, family members, friends, etc. It's not just to people that are dating or married. This is a tool called the Power and Control Wheel, and we use this for a few different reasons in our work. First off, there are some really uh, strong misperceptions in our society that abuse can only be physical. Um, and that's just not true. A relationship can be abusive without having any sort of physical violence happening whatsoever. So on this tool, you can see on the outside circle, physical and sexual violence. Those definitely can be present in an abusive relationship, but don't have to be. Everything else inside the circle are non-physical ways that abuse can show up in relationships. Oftentimes, these things are more subtle, they're more manipulative, they show up slowly and get progressively worse over time, and can honestly just be hard to identify as something that might be happening to someone. So using this power and control wheel can be a really great way to give somebody the words to explain the experiences that they're having in their relationship and really give them the power to identify that what, hap what is happening to them is in fact abuse. Here are some very common red flags of an abusive relationship. This list isn't exhaustive. It does include some things from the power and control wheel from the previous slide, but these are some of the most common things that we see with the people that we work with. Isolation from friends and family could be physical isolation. We live in Idaho where there are a lot of rural areas um, and access to transportation may be a challenge or maybe a partner intentionally makes that a challenge for somebody so they feel like they can't leave. Um, this could also be emotional isolation or manipulating somebody's relationships outside of their partner um, because it's going to feel a lot harder to leave someone if they feel like their friends and family aren't there to support them. So this might be undermining those relationships, saying things like, I don't like your friends, I don't want to spend any time with them, or you spend too much time with your family and they don't like me, so I don't want to go over there, or you shouldn't want to go over there either. Those sorts of things can um, really challenge somebody else's uh, somebody's relationship with other people and make it feel like they don't have anyone to turn to maybe when they do want to leave that relationship. Put downs and name calling general verbal abuse. This can sometimes be um, even joking, but if it's really meant to put somebody down or make them feel worse about themselves or put down their self-esteem, that's when it becomes a red flag. Um, pressuring or forcing a partner to do things, so really pushing those boundaries or making someone feel bad or guilty for putting boundaries in the first place, saying things like, well, if you really loved me, you wouldn't set these boundaries with me, um, things like that. Boundaries are a really important piece to keeping a relationship safe and healthy, and there should never be any guilt or pressure for having them. 
Suicide and self-harm is unfortunately a really serious um, red flag. It puts an immense amount of guilt on somebody if they feel like they have to stay in an abusive relationship to keep the other person from harming themselves. But that's never your responsibility. You're not a trained mental health professional. So please get somebody else involved to help that person if they're making those sorts of claims. But it is never your responsibility to stay in a relationship to keep someone safe. And then these last three, constant messaging, checking in, extreme jealousy, no respect for privacy, we tend to see more with technology and people's social media, um, using them as more of a means of control or keeping tabs rather than just as a way of communicating. So somebody constantly asking, who are you with? Where are you going? What are you doing? Um, Maybe requiring their partner to have their location services on. Um... Or saying things like, well, if you didn't have anything to hide, you give me your password to your phone or your, to your social media. Um, those sorts of things really show more a lack of trust and uh, wanting to control someone through those means rather than actually um, just using them as a way to communicate. Because I love you. I want to be your only guy. Because I love you, skip class with me. Let's stay in bed today. Because I love you, I just want to be with you so freaking much. Because I love you. I waited for you after chem lab. You were walking with Mark? Because I love you. You shouldn't be hanging out with that dude. You should know how dumb that makes me look. I don't care if she's your lab partner. Why do you have texts from him? Because I love you, this number? Delete. Because I love you, this Jason number? Delete. And, and Ben? Delete. Because I love you, I should smash your phone. I'll let you give me your password instead. Because I love you. I will check your texts every day. You got lucky. Because I love you. Because I love you. You think it's okay. Because I love you. You understand. Because I love you, you stop talking to your classmates. And you feel completely alone. Because I love you. That's not love. So after all of that, how do we build healthy relationships? How do we build these things that we're talking about and that we want to value so much? First, know your boundaries. Like I mentioned earlier, everyone has different boundaries. And as we grow up and have more experiences, we start to learn what those boundaries are. And if you do something or experience something and you think, hey, I didn't really like that and I think that might be a boundary for me, Honor that, acknowledge that, and know that for the next time. It's okay to discover a new boundary and have to address that with your partner or your friends or your family members, especially when, you know, our boundaries are kind of always changing as we have different experiences and grow. Respect and value yourself. We are all humans and we all have inherent value and worth and we're deserving of relationships where we feel respected and valued and loved and it's really important to know that everyone is worthy of those things no matter who you are. Practice communication and healthy conflict resolution. So it's really easy to say like you should be a great communicator. Good communication is the root of all healthy relationships but it's a lot more difficult to do so I encourage you to practice healthy communication and conflict resolution, starting with the smaller issues. So if something happens and it bothers you, bring that up, sit down, have a healthy, honest conversation so that when you get to the bigger issues, it's easier to do so. Practice, practice, practice makes perfect, right? So do it even though it feels uncomfortable at first and you might not feel great at it, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. Check in with yourself and your partner. So like I said, as we go along in our relationships, we start to have different experiences and everyone's kind of growing individually. We're both individual people with wants and needs. And it's really important to check in every once in a while with your partner just to see where you're at. Maybe you're feeling great in the relationship, but it's really important to know, are they feeling the same way? How are they feeling about our relationship? That goes with friendships and relationships with our family members as well. And then the last one is to be aware of red flags and signs of control. So talking about those things and being aware of them is really important. Like I said, when we first get into relationships, there usually isn't overt signs of abuse 
that happen. Otherwise, we wouldn't continue a relationship with that person. They start, to, they start to develop over time. So being aware of them and knowing what to look out for is really important in case you start to experience those things or you see a friend who starts to experience those things and you have the knowledge to kind of point them out and talk about them. Of course, this isn't an end-all, be-all list. Like I said earlier, there are other things to do, but these are the great ones to start with. So how can you support someone who might be experiencing an unhealthy or abusive relationship? Unfortunately, we know that this is really common, and actually one in three teens will experience some sort of physical, sexual, or emotional abuse by a dating partner. So there's a really good chance that you will know someone in the future, or maybe you already do know someone who has experienced these things. Um, There's some really easy ways that you can help that person and support them um, in getting through this hard time. First, reach out and don't ignore it. If you see something that makes you feel uncomfortable um, or maybe your friend says something that makes you um, not so sure about the relationship that they're in, talk to them about it. Say something like, you know, I saw this happen and that would have made me uncomfortable if it was me. You know, how did you feel about it? Um, Really try to open up that conversation um, and give them the opportunity to reflect on their own relationship. Also with that, Um, focusing on your friend or the person that you care about and not on the abuser. It can be really tempting to just say like, oh, they're a horrible person, you need to break up. Um, But there's a lot of other emotions going on. Um, They're in a relationship for a reason. So just attacking the person that they have maybe other um, strong and confusing feelings about can shut them down to actually having a conversation about what's going on. So focusing on them and saying things like, you know, I'm here for you, I support you, um, and maintain that support even if their choices are different than what you wish. Um, There's a really good chance that even if you talk to this person about your concerns, they may stay in that relationship or they may break up for a short period of time and then get back together. That can be frustrating for somebody um, to go through, um, you know, because you care about them, your friends, maybe your family members, whatever. Um, It can be hard to see somebody do something that you don't necessarily agree with or understand. Um, But you can say that to them and say, hey, I don't necessarily agree with this decision that you're making, but know that I'm here for you whenever you need me. Also, you can reach out to a trusted adult, um, maybe somebody at your school, like a counselor, maybe a parent or a friend's parent, um, or you can reach out to an agency like the WCA. We have two 24-hour hotlines that are totally anonymous. You don't have to tell the advocate on the other line anything about you personally, um, but you can say, you know, this is going on with my friend, and I don't know what to do for them, and the advocate can, um, can help you in different ways to support that person. So again, the vision of the WCA is to foster community where everyone thrives in safe and healthy relationships. And we truly believe that everyone plays a part in making this vision a reality for our community. So what can you do? Start by speaking out and starting conversations. Really just talking about these things, making it normal to talk about these things, um, acknowledging that we see a lot of um, unhealthy behaviors romanticized in TV and movies and media, Um, having conversations around those things, um, bringing up instances where we're seeing unhealthy characterizations of relationships um, or healthy ones and really just making it a normal piece of our day-to-day lives and talking about these things. Supporting and believing all survivors, all survivors deserve to be believed and if they are coming to you and disclosing their experience, How you respond is a really, really critical step in their healing process. So support them, provide whatever resources you can, um, and even just saying something as simple as I believe you is one of the most empowering things you can say to someone who's been abused or assaulted. Um, And then finally, modeling healthy relationships. We talked a lot about the different characteristics of healthy relationships. And unfortunately, there are some people in our world who have never seen what that actually looks like. So doing those things and modeling the behaviors that we want to see in our relationships and that we want to see in others' relationships can be a really powerful um, learning tool. 
If you're experiencing abuse, know that you can get help. If you're in immediate danger, I encourage you to call 911. Um, And if you're not in immediate danger, but you're still experiencing some of the things that we talked about today, I encourage you to talk to a trusted adult, whether that's a school counselor or utilizing some of the WCA services. The WCA offers a variety of services confidentially and at no cost to members of our community who have experienced domestic abuse or sexual assault. We have two 24-hour hotlines that are for survivors who need access to resources, but also for people in the community who might be concerned about someone and not sure how to um, help them. Anyone can call the hotline um, anytime and speak with an advocate about the different ways that they can help somebody that they care about um, or get them to the resources that they might need. We do operate an emergency safe shelter. However, unfortunately, it's always full and there is always a waiting list, but that is a critical service that we provide to our community. We provide safety planning for our clients when they have left a relationship, which is statistically the most dangerous time for them. Um, But also if they're choosing to stay in that relationship for whatever reason for the time being, safety planning can include things like If you know a fight is coming and it may get physical, getting out of the kitchen and the bathrooms, because those are the places with the most hard surfaces and potential weapons, can help keep someone safe until they're at a point where they maybe can um, leave that relationship safely if they choose to do so. Court advocacy, we have uh, advocates at the Ada County Courthouse every single day of the week helping people with protection orders. They're not lawyers, so they can't represent someone or give legal advice, but they help people walking through the process of obtaining a protection order, go to court with that person and provide that emotional support, and then can also direct them to other services that they may um, be eligible to receive through the WCA or other agencies in our community. We do clinical services, so counseling for youth and adults. We also have specially trained child play therapists to help Um, young kids who may not have the skills or the language to express what they've experienced in their homes. Um, We do two weekly support groups, one for survivors of domestic abuse and one for survivors of sexual assault. And then we can provide case management, financial empowerment, and life skills classes to try and give our clients all of the tools to be successful and live a life free of abuse. It's also worth mentioning that all of our services, with just a couple of exceptions, are available to men and folks of all genders. Thank you for spending some time with us today and talking about relationships and learning how you can be an advocate for change in our community. Help us get to that vision of a community where everyone thrives in safe and healthy relationships. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us and we'd love to hear from you.